You know, the thing is about a lot of things right now is that we're in the point of stage of the, of the industry right <coughs> It's right now. It is literally do or die right now. You, know, you sure you have games that are coming up out there that people may or may not be that too much excited for. You have games out there that are continuing to fail. And lessons aren't being learned. Step one, lessons aren't being learned. Let's take it by step by step, my friends. Out there right now. Because they're failing left and right. And when you get a report out there, there's people that apparently these companies, like all of them, if not most of the industry... Are trying to make live service games i have to say why are we doing this you know they're failing you know they're not going to make their money back and yet people keep buying into them or the companies out there like you know the higher ups you know the ones that are in the big suits or chain of commands whatever you want to call it they just see that well if you fail for this game it's going to work for another one but for every good one you get you get like 12 dozens of them out there that aren't as good or they don't live up to, air quote, air quote, the expectations that we have for companies or they realize that they don't have that golden winning formula. Okay, for example, look at the film industry. It's not that the, oh, most cinematic universes have existed beforehand. They have before the MCU. Remember, the good old days of the dark universe, you know, universal monster films. They have existed in the past. Before you knew that they were all kind of connected in some one way, or they did unique things with them. The MCU has failed because they try to cash in on a franchise that climactic reached its peak in power to see this empire come crashing down after itself with Phase 4, or Phase 5, and all the television shows out there. out there okay and then people are saying that it's fine it's doing great but when it's not and when people have to admit saying that let's go back and how fix our tv shows we need to fix this we need to, to fix our tv show they need to fix their movies then things to understand that this franchise that you love is going to fail if you do not speak out about it. And if you do not get things to be back on top again, it's going to fail. Kevin Feige can state all he wants is saying that it's going to be a good movie or Deadpool Wolverines are going to try to save us. It will fail. We have seen products like this fail dozens upon dozens of times. And if they do not listen, guess what's going to happen? It's going to fail. And things aren't going to be as great as you all think they're going to be. I have seen this happen, and we've seen this fail. People trying to bring back dead franchises or people who are trying to salvage them go nowhere. And if you say, that, well, they go places, I'm like, I have to tell you that that's not exactly how things, a lot of things work, my friend. You know, things work in a lot of ways that we can't control of. But what you can do is what we've always been saying, you speak with your wallet. Don't buy the next game. That's fine. It's your money. Do what you want with it. Again, look how many people were very much originally upset with Ubisoft having two massively broken Assassin's Creed games out there. And people saying that these games are not quite living up to the standards of back in the old day. With, you know, the Ezio trilogy or the, our colonial assassins out there. Heck, even Rogue, that despite it being a little iffy at times for me, was still way better than it had any right to be. At least from a story standpoint. Not a gameplay, story. And when people are saying the best part of Rogue is the story and not the actual moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, you know you have screwed up. Sure, the gameplay is fine, but it's like... Not quite there what I want to expect it or what the original idea of Syndicate could have been. Instead, we get stuff that's totally different or 
Unity had a lot of things going for it, but they but as a lot of people have said and stated, it was just completely broken at launch. I was there. Hell, I freaking remember getting into a bunch of enemies, thinking that, okay, I got this, I can do this. Yeah, and then my attack button stopped working until I died, and then it worked. Or I just locked out, go back to the main menu, reopen up the game, and then it's like, all right, there it is, it's working again. But that's just how the way it is. It is not just limited to these big companies, too. It can also be smaller companies, too, where you want them to live up to expectations and then they don't deliver on promises or they overpromise on a lot of things out there. Heck, even like the quote that Francis Ford Coppola is a little ashamed about at the cans when filming Apocalypse Now, you know, too many of us in, in the jungle, we had too much money, you know, he's gone, he went mad. Yeah, Apocalypse Now took a toll on the guy, but... When you look at behind the scenes of what they had to go through with filming, yeah, it is saying a lot, actually. Pretty much is saying a lot that that film even managed to be made. But that's just how the industry goes at times and times. And if you don't speak up again, like I keep saying, we're going to see the crash happen. It's happening now, and it's coming. Again, another step, you know, lessons aren't being learned, you know. Again, lessons are learned. How many live service games fail? Too many of them. And when too many of them fail, guess what happens? They all learn the lessons. And then you start to wonder why a lot of these things fail countless times in a row without people realizing that, hey, you could salvage this if you fix the problem or stop making them and go back to the drawing board and make New IPs, and also we are the ones, the gamers, say, what happened to new and original IPs? What happened to a bunch of stuff that we used to play countless countless times? And when we get new IPs, sometimes we don't know that they're even coming out, or ironically, they don't have the best marketing out there. Or they mismarket the game when there was originally another idea. And it's not the developer's fault. A lot of things just unfortunately get Buried, and that's the sad thing and sad truth. Sure, I remember the guys at Ninja Theory talking about like how in the world did they have to market, you know, the very first Hellblade. A lot of that was them just doing their development diary as they took us on this journey of them making the game. I felt like that was bold and interesting making the game, but also they were putting into us, the fans and their consumers, to really help them out market the game. Sure. At that same time, too, they were still getting, you know, in magazines, they were still getting interviews, they were even showing off the tech with Unreal and what they could could do with it. I feel like that stuff was, to say the least, interesting, because I felt like, yeah, that was interesting, that was pretty cool of what they were doing, but at the same time, you have to truthfully understand on, on, you know, what could work and what could not work at that same time. It was a very different time back then. Nowadays, they're bought up by Microsoft, and yeah, they have a, a, a you know good amounts and fair share of resources on what they can't or cannot do nowadays. So, so keep that in mind on what things they can or can't do nowadays. But then again, if the word spreads around nicely, we'll pick up the game and play it. That was one of those games I kept in, in my mind because I'm like, man, this looks pretty cool. I want to play it, especially from a development dive standpoint. In fact, that sometimes you do miss a little bit. That has to be, you know, noticeable what the hell is going to happen. But at this... But at that same time, things have changed. We're not getting the same content as we used to get back in the day. Things are falling out of hands. The film side of things, they're trying to salvage things because they are starting to notice what we do like and what we don't like. But at the same time, we're it's still that uphill battle. Not a whole lot of films are going to be 
successful as they used to be. Streaming services like Netflix, they are willing to hit the reset buttons with different people coming in and taking over. At least they're learning, but at the same time, is that too little too late with all the other streaming sites increasing their prices as well? In fact, Netflix is one of those companies that, hey, you know, I still support, but at the same time, I still have to say that, well, they keep increasing the prices and it keeps getting higher and higher. I just might pull out the end. You know, HBO wasn't looking that great either, especially with the Max side of things where they started pulling content and they started popping up on other stream sites. That could have been the sign that for Warner Brothers and HBO probably wasn't the best move to have a streaming site. Could have still had it the same way as they had it, but too little, too late. David off is a hole for not releasing some movies out there and canceling them or finding different ways to get them out the door. But, however, at that same time, it also comes down to, well, do you know the behind the scenes of Warner Brothers? A little bit, but at that same time, it really isn't all that great, unfortunately. Things are happening and things are changing for the better and for the worse. The worst part of all is Hollywood is still dying and they're still burning. Sure, they can try to salvage and be like saying, nope, we're done. You can say that was a great thing with the SAG after strike, saying, enough hiring bad writers, we need to get good writers in. But sometimes it's too little, too late. And that's why I see a lot of people start to move out and probably go indie. Indie is definitely the best way to go to these days and age. But again, if we do not talk about the stuff, it's going to fail or they're going to realize that maybe we need to stop spending $200 million on these live action remake games that no one's been asking for, Disney. The critiques are there, and people are saying, stop making these live-action remakes. Go, please make a new IP. And even when they do, do you show up or not? Heck, the point that I'm mad about is Pirates of the Caribbean being rebooted, and there's no Johnny Depp. They didn't listen to the writers, which one of them said, yes, they should hire back Johnny Depp. And even Jerry Bruckheimer said, yes, Johnny Depp should come back to finish the franchise, I think it even like a producer, I don't quote me on that correctly, but I believe even a producer said Johnny Depp should come back to Pirates of the Caribbean and finish it. And you had a lot of support saying that, yes, even Johnny Depp stated and has said that if I will come back if Disney publicly apologized to me. Yet they gave Jonathan Majors a stance on ABC and not Johnny. Just saying out there, just saying... Just saying, just saying. Just saying, but it, it feels a shame because Pirates of the Caribbean, one of my favorite franchises out there. And yet, here we are with a franchise that they're saying that, nope, we are just going to reboot everything. And not care about the fan base because I guess Disney doesn't like money and I guess Disney is still gonna sign with his ex wife. And to me that's not very cool. That's that's just like unacceptable that that a franchise that I once loved is gone. And hey, I even stated if Disney wanted to milk the franchise, they honestly could have. You could, you still could have given us the Jack Sparrow storyline just to finish it out, but still focus on other different pirates in the Caribbean out there. Heck, do stuff that was before the main series, which they were going to do with the with the with the with the with the Xbox 360 and PS3 version of a brand new Pirates of the Caribbean story, set 15 years before the events of Curse of the Black Pearl. But if you know what happened to the to its studio, who developed the Tron video game for the seventh gen consoles, it didn't really work out that well. In fact, I guess it was almost completed with that game for Pirates, and we never got it. Until, you know, Ubisoft answered my call with Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, which is pretty much great and what everybody was hoping and to be asking for. So it's ironic how things work out like that, and then you realize what happened to, like, 
to Skull and Bones. As their employees have said, we have too many different... We, they had too many different directors coming in and off the project, meaning that there was no clear vision. There was no way for that game to be salvaged and lessons weren't learned. And don't be surprised if Skull and Bones shut down. Don't be surprised if you see, you know, as everyone's going to say, you know, kill, kill the Justice League's... Kill the Justice League is going to shut down in a few months because neither did Warner Brothers learn that lesson. In fact, they didn't learn the lesson on why people absolutely appreciated Hogwarts Legacy. The reason why fans appreciated Hogwarts Legacy, like myself, is because it gave us the Harry Potter video game that we were all asking for, that we were all wanted to see. As a kid, we wanted to explore the wizarding world of Harry Potter. We got to live our dreams out in Hog in Hogwarts. I thought that was pretty cool. Sure, there was no Diagon Alley, which I was a little mad, upset about, but I wasn't too upset about. And some of us were a little bit hoping that, hey, perhaps we will get an expansion that could allow us to go to Diagon Alley again. But, it, but it's like, you know what? If it wasn't meant to be... I will see that at least in the sequel, or hopefully we can explore other aspects of the Wizarding World. Like some, like even some people said that we should go to Japan next, like you know the Japanese school, which I think that would pre be pretty much a badass decision, honestly. But then again, people said that the, the spell you use also changed your robe, so you so they might know if you use the Killing Curse or not. So, <laughs> but. Warner Brothers didn't get that message. Instead, they're like, yeah, we'll make more live service games. Despite the fact them knowing, knowing 100% that Killer Justice League is not making them the money that they want. That them knowing them charging these ridiculous amount of money, along with Rocksteady, for these terrible, you know, time savers is not making them money. Because people aren't willing to grind out for the Joker or pay up money up front for a character that looks really ugly. That's an ugly design for the Joker. And for a content, for context, you're still playing the same missions over and over again just to grind resources to get to, you know, alternate universes, you know, Elseworlds out there to fight Brainiac again. And once again, you're getting the same boss battle with Brainiac. Oh, it's not the Flash this time around. It's freaking Green Lantern. And I gotta say, but why? Why is this? Let me guess. The third, the third Brainiac you're gonna defeat, uh, we're gonna give it Batman. Because that's the only other two you can use. Or it's gonna be Superman. Heck, it's not gonna be Wonder Woman. It's not that. Hell, I'd be surprised if they give a cyborg boss battle, which they're not going to. Heck, they're not even going to get to the other DC villains. You know, DC villains, which we keep saying has rich history with the DC. Instead, we get, you know, a like baffling choice for the Suicide Squad. Killer Shark, Harley Quinn, Captain Boomerang, Deathstroke, or Elseworld 2 Deathstroke, or a version of Deathstroke that I'm like, so is he the original Deathstroke, or is he... Something else. Oh, whoa, that was pretty badass. Is out there, but things aren't looking great. Once that fails completely, WB is not going to say that, yeah, we're going to stop making a live service game. They already know exactly what they're going to do. A lot of this, you could say, has been planned in motion from the start, but still, I have to say that I'm not that excited. For the future of gaming. If this is the type of content. That they are willing to spend money on. Down the drain. And people say that yeah it's fine. It's not fine. Because it's not fun at all. When you miss the entirety point of. Why gamers are really upset about stuff. It really goes to show you that. They didn't care one bit. And most importantly the people who didn't care are. I'm going to say it. Consulting firms. Like, I'm going to be for real with all of you. Why are companies hiring these consulting firms to, air quote, help out with development that goes nowhere whatsoever? 
None of this is helpful for the gaming industry, and it only makes things look even worse than it did beforehand. Because to me, it's strikingly baffling that you have companies out there saying that, yeah, we use this company to, air quote, help out with development. But then you start to wonder, what did they work on with development? Like, why is Sam Lake from Remedy, a very talented writer, mind you, sure, Control isn't all that great, but the first two Max Payne games, great game. Alan Wake, great game. Is hiring a consulting firm with Remedy to help them out with Alan Wake 2. I don't get that in the slightest. And I have to say, but why is that even happening to begin with? Heck, even look at the companies who are working with them. Out there. And it makes, makes us all of us say that, why are you hiring them? Like, why did they need to be hired for Marvel Spider-Man 2? Like, why? Or any other games out there? And it's funny how they're trying to come out and say that, yeah, it's just a bunch of certain people of a certain race, but it's also the people... But it's really the people who you want us to be in the games more often. It's my people. It's the Spanish people. Latina people. Latino people. Who started the whole... Hey, we're movement against them to find out if they're working on these games or not. So I find that to be hilarious and be like, wow, that's great. That's pretty awesome. But people want to go back to playing video games. We want to go back to watching movies or reading comic books. I could talk about the whole comic book thing, my friend. But I think you understand why anime and manga and light novels have been winning. But to keep this segment short, our heroes are still heroes. We get to see them go on a journey from zero to hero, or zero to hero, back to zero again, or maybe they become a villain. You have these branching arc storylines that could go on forever, or stuff that is short and sweet to a point. Even individual mangas that you buy out there for the volumes are still pretty good. Like the immortal, like the immortal princess that I'm, that I'm reading right now, that she's like they're playing an MMO, like or a VR or augmented reality M MMO, kind of like SAO and a few others that like, okay, that they all go in and play, but she picks the undead class and she got to be a little upgraded because she found something and now she's like an immortal princess, which is pretty cool, my, my I add you. So I think that's really cool and I think that's really awesome for what, the, what they're doing. And the main character, she's pretty cute actually, so I really like this stuff. So I actually really like this stuff, and I think it's pretty cool. But at that same time, I still have to state that that's one example out of a hundred dozen examples. Hell, I cried in Violet Evergarden. Can a comic book make me do that again? No. It can't. Because Marvel and DC and other companies aren't getting together. Maybe on the indie side of things, they are getting together. But at the same time, we know there's still struggles with the, on the indie side of things, too. And I think they are still understanding that, hey, we need to get this together. We left the industry for the reason, or we banded together to fight against the big dogs out there. And I still say, that's great. If we all come together, united together, we can stand a chance. But all these industries out there, they're not listening. Hollywood isn't still listening because they're still hiring some bad writers out there that are still getting hired a lot. Look at what happened to Man Webb. Multiple different writers could not save that movie, along with a director who is pretty good at writing some really good screenplays out there for, like, HBO and several others. However, at that same time, when the co when, yes, when your lead actress has to come out and be like, yep, I hated filming on this project. She didn't know what the script was. She kicked, she kicked the curb to her agency, went to a new one. That says a lot. Even the actress who I love, I fucking love this actress. Uh, I can't say. Uh, uh, hold on, it's right here. I, it's on the tip of my tongue. I know who she is.
Let's see here. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, Sydney Sweeney. I can't say her name. Yeah, Sydney Sweeney, Sweeney, who was Julia for Man Web. How she was fighting, or I would say like fighting, like she wanted to come down, like the way Julia does in the comic books. Which may I remind you, I do like Julia in the comic books, especially her costume, which is one of my absolute favorites in the in the comic books. For a alternate version of Spider Man, or like one of the many different spider womens out there, I always loved that costume. That was so cool to see. Even the trailer was like the best costume in the trailer, but the way she wanted to come down, how she finally got it, I'm like, this is an actress who was caring about the character. Please, why don't we hire more of these people like her or Henry Cavill? So things are really are just getting out of control in hand like that. Like you have her, like Henry Cavill, and probably dozens, and probably a few other people out there too, who are really passionate about stuff. Whether that be comic books, video games, or animation or anime. Heck, like even James Cameron was so passionate about, again, Alita Battle Angel, even though he said, look, I don't have time to direct Alita Battle Angel. You can see how much passion he was still about Battle Angel when they were still making it with Robert Rodriguez, just listen to how Cameron was talking about Battle Angel and how he said Rob knew where to take the story, but he also wasn't afraid to, you know, sit, do a couple changes out there. And they even still had one of uh, the creator of Battle Angel come down to the set of filming, and he said this is pretty good. Hell, again, look at the best example out there right now. Right now, say love him or hate him, when Netflix does something good for once, and they hire some really... And we mean really good people out there. <sighs> Have to say this. Give them credit. The live action adaptation of One Piece is really good. It's much faster than the anime. Not gonna lie. And it does jump some parts over the manga, which I I wish they didn't. Like, Serp, like again, like the Serp Village arc has some problems. Like, I'm missing Usopp's little buddies out there. I wish they kept them in there. Obviously, for, like, acting reasons, they probably couldn't use child actors. We could possibly give a hypothetical scenario that even if they did hire child actors, they would still have to be under regulations. They have to do all the paperwork and making sure not only do they feel comfortable and set, but, you know, you only have so much time with them before they say, all right, that's all they have to do for film today. We need to pick this up tomorrow or... If they get too anxiety or too anxious to be on set. So, obviously, I knew that was going to get cut out. I can't blame them, but perhaps maybe in a flashback we'll see them in the next season. But that will be nice if they go back and retcon that a little bit and put back the children. Or, like, one of the other villains from the Black Cat Pirates, he was supposed to be in it. The guy who always moonwalk, that got cut out too. Or uh, the guy who was part with the, oh god, I forget his name, but he, one of the actors was supposed to die, but they killed him off, but I'm like, damn it, he's supposed to stay alive with her, but like, damn it, but that's okay. But then there are some scenes they actually did pretty good. They still handle getting the girl Mary very well. They handled Usopp and his love interest very well. I love the actor who played Usopp. Definitely one of my favorites next to Nami, Emily Rudd. So, holy crap, that crew was nailed down. And even people have said that the cast, they really nailed not only the look of the cast, but they nailed what made all the characters so special. Sir Village Arc may have had a lot of heat, but I still am going to say Montgomery's Jacob, Jacob playing Usopp, Chef Kiss, you know. I can't I can't pronounce my own, uh, my, my bro, the, the guys who are... Was, is it Inegi? I, I, sorry if I butchered his name, but again, actor playing Luffy, spot on. Tess Schuyler, spot on, you know. Can you? Spot on. And Emily Rudd, pretty great Nami. Hell, even when you have the 
main Straw Hat voice actors, like all the mains, like all of them. Like Akumi. Uh, oh god, no, that's not her fucking name. But the actress who plays Luffy, when she comes out, yeah, my yeah, Miami, there you go. Miami comes out and says that he's really good as Luffy and she and he's great despite the language barrier. It's like, hey, that is saying something if they really like this, or again, if they say that, hey, you know, or if, you know, again, like, you know, all of them are praising them in their own different ways, or, again, remember, again, if the lead, if the creator, Oda Sensei, loves the show, and he says, look, I love the snail phone, that should say big numbers. When you hire the right people, hire the right crew, the writing could still be better, it's better, but people are saying that this is really good, that should be saying something. That should what you, you, you that, that is what we should be praising. Stuff like that is what we should be praising. Where is it? Where is it? Like stuff like that is what should be praising and what should be being made. But then again, I'm gonna say this: not everything needs to be a live action adaptation of anime or manga or light novels. If it can fit, you should go for it. But what's the point of doing stuff that's in live action? And let's do like the final segment right here, right now, because I believe I'm going on a bit too long. Is it worth it in the end? We already talked about live service multiple times, but I'm still going to say this. It's not worth it in the end because it feels like it's a model that's destined, destined to die out eventually until they learn their lesson. And when it finally does die out, then... We can finally say, we told you so, now please make back single player experience. It's not worth having these pointless grinds. Well, well, it depends on the grind, I should tell you that. Straight up, the fact that it always going to depend on the grind. If the grind is worth it, people aren't going to be too mad. They'll just say that, got to get a little bit grinding, and then it's going to be worth it in the end. But when people are coming out and telling you that, like, hey, stuff is not worth doing. Like, pointless, pointless, and I mean this. You know, different editions of a game that gives you only a certain amount of access to the game. Like, the reason why Star Wars Outlaw is getting so much flack right now is because Ubisoft decided to do it once again, just like with EA and several other their games as well, charge you different prices for different editions. $70 only gives you the base game. No, no, it's no special pre-order bonuses. No additional content, not even, like different skins or weapons? No, you just get the base game at $7. Okay, but then what about the Gold Edition? Well, you get the Season Pass and two extra missions that are on the damn disc, that are in the game, but they decide to lock it away for a Gold Edition. And if you go even higher, you get all the other stuff, even like some additional content again, and the Season Pass. And people keep saying, but why? The why is money. The why is that they aren't learning their lessons again. Oh, there's the lessons again. And it's scummy tactics out there that people keep allowing to happen. And they are, oh, that happened. And we allowed it to happen. Out there. It starts with one game. And then it starts to affect every other game out there. Some companies are actually pretty much reasonable with that $80 or going higher to $70 game, or if they want to charge them more, they will give you more out there. Like, hell, even the, uh, let's see here, up uh, there it is, the <clears throat> the deluxe edition of Final Fantasy 16. I got a physical map, I got a steel book, I got some extra content, and at least that was worth it in the end, because like, hey, it's a steel book. I get a steel book again. I love steel books. Or even stuff that was like, I think it was $80 for... Uh, for Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Again, got a steel book. Got some other. Ugh, hold on, it's right here. But one second. Oh, hold on. Aha, here it is. Yeah, I got a soundtrack, I got an art book, I got some other stuff, also some... 
additional items they can pre they can download from the game right away. But yeah, that should say a lot. And I think a steelbook also came with this. I'm not 100% quite remember, but I like the box that it does come with. So that should say a lot. If you're willing to spend the extra money, it has to be worth it in the end. But what Ubisoft and even Scummy Atlas are still doing, along with all the other companies out there, charging you so much money that you have to spend more to get the content that you should have in the game. So on the three loaded. I'm glad, I'm glad people are liking the remake. I'm glad people are experiencing Persona 3 for the first time or for the hundredth time. But the problem is that people have with that, at least, is that they're saying that, well, if we do thing, it is going to cost you a bit more. Or you're going to be like me and be like, wait till everything finally comes out again. And that was kind of badass what I did, not going to lie. And wait until you get the full package again. Because sometimes, as people are going to state and say, that the sad truth is that it may not be worth doing all that again. That it might not be worth doing if that's all the content that they might be willing to, you know, come out in the end or really do all that again. I think that's really just scumming to charge so much stuff just to be like, yeah, but if you waited, you could have done all that and whatever, which people say yes, that tends to be the problem. But at that same time, I, for myself, would like to state and say that it's been happening. Look at Atlas with... Shin Megami Tensei Digital Devil Saga or Digital Devil Saga for the second one that finally came out after so long people weren't really that happy with it because well, well I'd have to say maybe they're happy with the story or the content they got but I'm talking about all that missing content additional dungeons cut for the game story missions cut for the game oh you want classic demons again like Sane and Mara buy the DLC Buy the DLC to get these type of content. And people don't like that. When you're cutting content from the game that has already been established, say, in other games, you know that it's not a good sign out there. Heck, even Shin Megami Tensei 5, for how much I do not like that version of the game, had so much content that was put on for DLC. Even with additional story content, it, it wasn't quite worth doing. It's like, why couldn't this be in the base game? Why couldn't this stuff just be there? Heck, now that it is finally coming to the PS4, PS5, and the Xbox family, guess what? If you waited, you are now going to get the full experience along with the new story path called Vengeance. So I think maybe now will be a completed game out there or not. But we're going to have to wait and see on what this game is going to have in store for all of us. And if it would be worth going back to the world of Shin Megami Tensei Five, A game that I really do not like because A, I played at a friend's house and really didn't like what I was experiencing. Despite the core gameplay being kind of fun a little bit. But the overall story, I'm like, no thank you. If this took them that long to get the story out there, it really should have been like, maybe we should scrap this idea again and try again to remember what made the classic SMT game so great. I think my favorite SMT is still going to be Nocturne, but I, God damn it, you got to give credit where it's due with SMT4. That's just a great game right out there. Or even like the original Shin Megami Tensei. Pretty good story after all. Or heck, I even still give credit to where it's due. Uh, what was it? Uh, the, the DS title, Strange Journey. Pretty good, actually. Pretty good, actually. I Pretty good game, actually. So that was pr a pretty great experience. If you want to play a DS title, if you still have it around, play Strange Journey. That's a great game. But SMT5, not a great game, at least in my opinion. But it also wasn't that great with the DLC content because, ugh. That was just nasty. Hell, you guys remember back in the old days when we used to have unlockable bosses that if the developers did put in the game, it's in the game, which is pretty great. But I kind of hate having to buy 
additional boss battles, unless it's fully justified, of course. Unless it is fully justifiable. Again, you know, we didn't have, like, the internet wasn't quite as strong as back in the day, so you probably have different additions to buy, fight these bosses. But again, I hate the fact that you have to buy DLC to play Demi Fiend, even though it's like, come on. Come on, that. Come on. I shouldn't have to do that. I, I shouldn't have to do that. But yeah, it's stuff like this, or like just greedy tactics of like, hey, buy this edition to play this game, or buy this to get upgraded as hell. I still remember the Battlefront 1 controversy, or even just like 2, just how nasty this was, because how very scummy the tactics were, and how it's like, yeah, you could essentially buy all the stuff, but it's like, no, it's like, pay us now these higher editions to unlock all the stuff that you want, for instantly or instant access or pay money for these greedy microtransactions that are in these games. Okay, to at least get the advantage to get yourself the Sith Lords you want to play or the iconic heroes you want to play as in Battlefront 2. Again, the whole Battlefront 2 controversy was everywhere. It was nationwide and finally got people to say that yes, loot boxes are gambling. Do not don't put them in the game, and it was like, yeah, this is going to ruin the industry. It's like, thanks, EA. EA was truly the breaking point in that iceberg. They went, boom, crash, and people are just saying, no more, regulate the stuff. It is gambling, which it already was out there. And we say, people, you got to start fighting back. It's not just the live service crap. It's sports, too. Hell, Hell, I don't even want to buy a sports game, despite the fact that my dad might be happy that I got a sports game, even though I played a few of them in the past. And it's like, but it's like, look, it's not worth buying when they're kind of broken, same old content reskinned, looks a little no shiny or new. But there's an exact reason why people are saying that we are moving, like moving, and I mean moving away, like from EA and. 2K Sports and everybody else because it's not worth it in the end for, for, for that type of content. Like, like for that type of content, it, it's not worth it. For the type of content that they want to charge you or to really get at you, it's not worth it when you're spending so much money on a game that you might say, I'm done playing with a character or say, I'm just done playing the game. And you realize that, crap, I just spent real-world money to get this fake currency to upgrade a character. Trust me, it has happened to me more than a few times. Because again, don't have a lot of storage on the PS4 back in the day. I should have got myself a higher storage count, but that was me. Always seeing some money that I might have spent on it if I had leftover. Just to get my character to be better. For all of a sudden to me be like, yeah, I'm deleting the file. Just to play the other game just now. Or to play the game that I wanted to play, so... Trust me, it's there. I've been, in, I've been very guilty of that, and it's like, hey, it's my fault for not realizing that. Lesson learned out there. Uh, to sum up everything at the all in, it's that we're in the time where things need to change drastically. Get rid of these people in the industry that are causing all these problems. Stop hiring consulting firms. We do not need them whatsoever to be help out developers make better games out there or make their story better it's not worth it you're going to see the backlash that gamers are saying no do not hire them they have no business in here whatsoever to be a part of developers part of the program like i think it's just it just baffles me that they're even being hired in the first place just to be like, yeah, 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 like, like we're part of the team. It's like, you didn't contribute anything to the team. Or, you know, talk about, we didn't even talk about localizers. And there's a lot of people fighting back saying that, look, if they're going to keep changing the context of a game, then it's not worth buying or stuff. Or, like, they keep changing characters to whatnot. Hell, there even was a, mo was a yeah, it was like a light novel that was coming out that, completely changed the story of what it should have been for one of the characters that it wasn't worth it. Heck, people are even so afraid right now that 
uh, that if you guys remember the patch update that was for Final Fantasy VII Remake, that if it's an old game, like over four years old, but then it's like, hey, they changed line for Aerith, even though it's, you could say yes, it was still the actress who said it. Which, again, everybody said that was fine. Okay, it was still the actress herself, but now it's getting creepier or freaky, out, or freaky that, hey, this could happen any time for a game that they could change lines, change dialogue on a whim without you knowing it. Or they could patch stuff out that's not that wasn't really a problem. There's a reason why people are saying that they're so afraid right now for, for all this stuff to happen because it's not the industry that we once knew or times are changing. Technology may have gotten better to do all this crap, but now it's getting crazy. What about censoring old content that is in are in these really older games to that now like yeah we're gonna change it now so because it feels too problematic but it's like it's an older game why would you why, like why would you change it if there wasn't a problem to begin with back then why is it now we'll tell you why people are just weird nowadays or they can't be that take a joke if they can't take a joke then that's one thing but if they can't handle the content that we used to have back in the day then it's like well then. <laughs> Then what was the point? But tend to all, a lot of things just need to change in the industry, change for the better, and to to improve upon. There's a reason why people are going in in development teams because I think they are finding more passion with these developers over there on that side. For a very good reason, people are moving away from comic books to go more indie comic books to find people who are passionate over there or Go to anime and manga where we are still getting these great stories out there. You know, that's what we want to see out there. Growth within the industry. Growth within the industry and go back to stuff that we all used to love. Instead of us saying that what happened to the old days. Because I think that's what it's making all of us wonder and question that are we ever going to get back to these old days of entertainment when we're not. But there's still some hope out there. For every bad game we get, we get someone who's probably saying, I'm going to fight this or just make a good content that we're all going to enjoy again. Like that, There's always that game that's going to rise up like Stellar Blade that all of us are going to support out there. There's always going to be that comic book that people are going to say, yes, finally, they are, they are, they're learning, or this is something cool that everyone should support indie. I know some of my comic books that I have supported are still taking a while to come, but it's like, hey, don't rush, and things do happen within people's personal life that we say, take your time, I'd rather have it be good than for you to rush it out the door and say, I'm sorry, let everybody down. So, um, yeah, that's the end of this discussion rant. It went a bit longer than I wanted to again, but I'd just like to say thank you all so much for enjoying. If you do enjoy the content, hit that like button and subscribe for more. Thank you.